PM saying one step at a time. He's not saying no, but saying one step at a time. Can we look at another question um, from the viewer who's watching us right now, Lo Pei Ying, who says, are there any worries that the influx of foreigners into Singapore's demographic might affect the country's nation-building process? If so, is the government doing anything to solve this? Well, we are concerned that if the influx is too fast, uh, it will affect our nation building because you need time to integrate them, to get them to be acclimatized, to get them to be more Singaporean and their children to be Singaporean. So you have to control the rate at which they come in not to be too high. And that is what we are doing. We are watching it carefully. We are watching how the integration is happening in the constituencies. PA has many programs where we bring together the new citizens and the, uh, and the older citizens in Singapore. We have immigration and nat naturalization champions mm -hmm. who go and uh, knock door to door and say hello to them and, uh, and make the personal contact and linkage. So we can assess how it is going and we will make sure that we don't go too fast. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a valid concern which we are looking to. Can I, but, Mr. Sorry, the new citizens, you've actually tapped this group for some of your candidates. And some of the INCs are actually new citizens. They are themselves uh, uh, first generation and they, are make, they have joined the grassroots and they are participating uh, in the RCs and the CCCs and making a contribution in and this And in fact, way. you're fielding some in the next election. Uh, we are fielding a couple. They are new citizens, but they've actually been in Singapore for quite a long time. Will this be a new pool from which you're going to be looking to tap? Well, we look at all citizens uh, when we look for talent. Uh, I would not say no to anybody just blind, uh, absolutely upfront. I will have to look at it. But we will go case by case. But don't you think they need to be here for a longer period of time before well, they can be uh, truly represented? I think it's, that, is, that is valid. But these are people who have lived here, oh, 10 years, more. So it's not as if they arrived yesterday. So the issue of uh, aged population, and living costs, would the government consider giving more help in the area of health care to the older population? You know, today we have a system that's quite pragmatic. You go to a polyclinic, you get an appointment at the restructured hospital, you wait. But, you know, if you tell them you, you pay $70, $80 as a private patient, you get an appointment virtually maybe one month, two months, three months ahead. And these are the, the people of our country that have been a part of building our country and our nation, our economy the last 20, 30 We're years. We're running a bit out of time, but so let's so, give the PM some time to respond okay. to what you said. No, I think we will do more for the older citizens. Um, and we have been doing that every time we have a package, like the Grow and Share package, we have put in more for the older citizens through the MediSafe route, so that they will be able to take care of their health care. No, I understand that and we, we know, I know we have those safety net, but it's about health care is something very basic. Why, why must it be uh, uh, government health care? Th there was why a specific case like what you described recently in the newspapers. We are checking out what the particulars are. I'm not sure what exactly the reasons were, but if it should not have happened, then it will be put right. Okay. Um, you, Eugene first, perhaps. But the, the, but immigration is concerned, and Singaporeans can identify with the rational arguments, you know, but I think there's difficulty in, in having the effective connection. Right? People feel that you know, Singaporeans are being marginalised, and I wonder whether even the use of the term foreign talent is actually uh, marginalising, simply because you know, it seems to suggest that you know, the people here are not talented at all, and, and, and I think... Which that, is wrong. Correct, you know, you know, but, 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 the, but when we look at the foreign talent or, or the immigrants that are among us, you know, um, I think many Singaporeans are equally competitive. You know, so, and that's why I, I raised the, the, the point about whether, you know, while we rash, understand the rational arguments, you know, it, okay. Singaporeans have, haven't really secured, the, the, okay. you haven't got the buy-in yet. Okay. I, I think just to, to add on to Eugene's mm -hmm. point, I think... Point. Yeah, because the, the younger generation, we feel this especially with foreign talent coming in and we acknowledge that the country is progressing but we feel that we are being left behind. And the point of view is like um, from the government's, uh, what we feel from the government is you either catch up or you die because you don't expect the government to save you. That's, that's the point of view from the younger generation. And I really feel that um, we feel that we don't merely want a competent government anymore. We want a government that is also fair and empathetic. Um, you who mean cares you don't about just the people. want a competent government? Don't just want, yeah, we don't merely want a, a competent government, but we also want a government who is fair and empathetic and cares about our people as much as the economic progress. Okay, maybe we'll just get a quick response from uh, our former foreigner, her former foreign talent yeah. here before I, I get you to so respond. Taking what uh, Prof said, mm. don't marginalize the foreign, foreign talent. Uh, <laughs> we, are, we are shoulder to shoulder with Singapore, you know, and we are one of you. So that, that having said, then uh, there's no scope for this debate. 
of foreign talent. Okay. Well, I think you're right. The rational argument people understand, the emotional one is harder. It takes time, uh, it takes um, personal contact and effort, and it's not something which can be forced by the government. So we have to take cognizance of that and calibrate our policies in order to be able to work. As for young people, you're not being left behind. You're starting off at the starting block and the race is ahead of you. And we've equipped you, you've got good running shoes, you've got good gear, you've got good training, and I think that we are equipping you to run a good race. Whether you're in the poly, whether you're in the university, whether you've gone to the ITE, I think in Singapore, we make sure that you have the best chance possible. Because the competition isn't the foreigner who might be here, it's the millions of foreigners who are in the other places. And they are competing with us whether we like okay. it or not. Yeah, many people view Singapore as a nation of young now, right now. The views I get, the feedback I have, and that the old have been largely forgotten. No, we, we <laughs> haven't I, forgotten. I think, yeah, we have not forgotten, but the view, you see, that's why I say it's the perspective. The perspective is that today Singapore, the Singapore today is a nation of young. That's why we have Youth Olympics, we have, you know, Asian Youth Games and whatnot. I, I feel young also. Because of that, I feel very young. <laughs> but a lot of the people may not feel the way, same way I feel. They say we have been alienated. We have not marginalized. So maybe we should have an aged Olympics. Uh, just to balance things a little. Well, that would be wonderful. But Prime Minister, <laughs> um, as we are driving towards excellence, especially among the young generation, what happens to the people who don't meet those expectations? They will feel left out. They will feel that I have no place in Singapore. Where is that place for me? No, I think you want to have many possibilities and many, many opportunities. Not everybody wants to run exactly the same race. You may want to do music and play the ukulele. You may want to do art and, draw, uh, and, uh, and paint or sculpt. You may be a sportsman and be outstanding. You may be making a, med a video, media, and become a, 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 a very talented uh, producer of movies or director of movies. And I think that we ought to have all these opportunities for people to go. We give, we give you full chance to make to progress, to develop your talents, and to move ahead. Some will do better than others. I think we have to accept that because it's human nature. Not everybody will do equally well. Those who really cannot catch up, we have a safety net to help them to do better for themselves. But they have to make the effort still. Okay, we have only just a little time left. So, Prime Minister, any last words, um, general feel, um, given with what you've heard today here? Uh, we've covered a lot of issues. We talked about politics, we talked about mm -hmm. social issues, we talked about economic issues. Finally, it boils down to our future. The world is uncertain. There are risks, there are dangers. But there are also many opportunities. And I think that we are in a position to take advantage of those opportunities if we work together and we work as a team. You need good leadership, you need a capable government, you need a government which has a feel for the people and feels for the people's concerns and will look after them. And if the people make the effort and the government does its best, I think we have a bright future ahead. Well, Prime Minister, thank you very much. And thank you all for being here with us today. And thank you for your questions. We've come to the end of the program. There are a number of issues brought up by viewers that we could not tackle today, but we hope the forum has given you some food for thought as you prepare to go to the polls. As voters, we are all looking forward to nomination day when the parties finalize and submit their candidates to contest in the different constituencies. As to when that might be, only the Prime Minister knows. So Whenever that might be. <laughs> you can catch the show on channelnewsasia.com slash question time. I'm Melissa Hyag. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.